like, I'm truly psyched. Y'all gonna say, what the hell is, what's up with him? I ain't got no sippages. Not like I ain't got none. I got like six different bourbons in there. Uh, but I uh, figured I was coming out. I'm trying to keep my liver. <laughs> so what's up, people? What's up? What's up? What's up? I don't know, man. Um, I was watching. I don't know if you guys have been watching, but um, Tuesday was um, a lot of primaries that will determine who the Democrat will be running against the Trump public. Till the night, folks. We're getting close, baby. We're getting close. So far as I'm concerned, um, all of this hard work that I've been doing for the last couple years, all since 2020, really, since before then, but certainly um, leading up to the election and then after the election and, and my Creole powers and me giving you guys, you know, analyses and, and breaking things down and, and trying to explain this, that, the other so that it'll make sense. Trying to make this, this, this illogical nonsense make sense. Um, it's starting to pay off. When I, I look at the news, when I look at what um, those talking heads that are, are, are paid to talk and, and make predictions and so forth and so on, when I hear what they say, I feel vindicated. I feel like all of my preaching, my teaching, all of this has not been in vain. So yeah, I'm psyched. I'm psyched. I'm psyched. I'm psyched. Um, to my folks that's been knowing me for a minute, I keep saying this and I mean it. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. I do this, I've been approached about doing shows on various mediums and what have you. And I'm probably gonna take my show to another medium. But right now I've got so many other things going on that is is basically me working primarily by myself. I have one or two people that help me out. Um, and putting this together, but every week, week in, week out, I'm handling this production. I've got to make sure that my wife, my mics work. I've got to make sure that Facebook is live. I got to make sure that YouTube is live. I got to make sure I've been doing a couple little YouTubes here and there. I'm trying not to inundate and bombard you guys with YouTubes. I mean, not YouTubes, TikToks. The YouTubes have what they're calling shorts as well. So everybody's following suit. And so I just want to make sure that I can continue to give you a quality product. After we get past this election, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to expand my platform. I'm going to expand the show, how I give you the show, what's happened, and so forth and so on. But right now, I'm sticking to what has worked for the last three years. Imagine that. This has been three years that I've been doing the show. And if you watch me in the in the beginning and I watch some of my early shows, man, brother was like, Ooh, it's like watching paint dry. But I knew that and I wanted to learn the craft and I wanted to get good at it. And one of the reasons I haven't expanded, and I said this before as well, I don't want to be like a rapper who gets his or her first contract and basically have no control over the content of productivity of it, how it's produced, how it's directed, the message that's out there, and why not being a one-hit wonder. So I don't want to take on quote-unquote sponsorship for the show and then they tell me what to say, how to say, when to say it, and before you know it, it's no longer my message. It doesn't have the passion that you guys know that I feel when I do what I do, when I do what I do. 
how my man said, it's not what you look like when you do what you do, it's what you do when you're doing it, what you look like you're doing. So this is how I express myself. So with that being said, whoa, 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 it's six past to half. I'm going to go ahead and get this party started. I want to say good evening and welcome to the show. As always, I always start off the show by saying thank you for choosing to spend your Thursday nights with me. I am truly, I am truly, I am truly, three times, I'm truly humble that all of the things you could be doing on a Thursday night, you choose to be here with me, getting the message, getting my analysis, getting, listening to me rant, rave with the passion that I have about what it is that I do. If it's your first time tuning in, um, or if you've seen me before, my name is Hank Batiste. My show is called Mythologic. This shit makes no sense. But every week we try to make it make sense. I'm your host tonight, and every Thursday at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central, and that other Pacific, you know, I'm not doing the math right now. I'm your host, and the voices in my head are truly psyched, truly psyched. The primary elections, a lot of primary elections were last Tuesday. And what is starting to show in a lot of states, swing states, is all is not lost. As a matter of fact, despite mediocre performances, mediocre performances and leaderships, the Dems are looking pretty good. A hundred days ago, 150 days ago, we felt like all was lost. The House, we expected to lose at least 14 seats and blase, blase, and the, the Senate was up for grabs. Now the pendulum seemed to be swinging back and forth. And as a matter of fact, right now, maybe because of Roe v. Wade and some other things that are happening, people are starting to understand, people are starting to listen. And when I do this, I do it first as a child. When I was a child, my mom would preach to me, my mom would teach. And I always said my mom was, was the quintessential philosopher. She could teach you without you realizing you were learning. When I got to a certain age and I realized that she was trying to impart knowledge and wisdom on me, I would fight and I would try to ignore. But no matter how hard I tried as a child, a lot of that seeped into my subconsciousness. And what I see now is now that I'm the father and the grandfather, I do the same thing. And when I think people aren't listening, I find out that a lot of people that don't know me are listening. And those that say they're not in the politics and what have you, those that are kind of fed up with all of the games that they play in, 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 in politics, be it in local politics and municipal and cities or on the state level and certainly on the, the national or uh, federal level, you get so inundated, you get so full of it that you just, you kind of give up and you say, I'm not really into it because you feel weak. You feel like there's nothing you can do. But what this past Tuesday has shown us, what some of these primaries have shown us, is that all is not lost. What it's shown me is that people are listening, even those people that I don't know. What I have noticed is that um, some of those that I would call opponents, those that don't agree with our way of thinking, and um, I'm not going to go off on a tangent, but those that are, don't agree with what I believe in, they are stepping in and they're actually paying attention and they're seeing some of how some of the things that I say make sense, though they don't, Nothing I could say is going to change how you feel if you've come to your way of, of thinking and feeling and your life experiences have led you to the place you are right now. There's nothing that I can say to you in 30 minutes, even if you tuned in every 
Thursday night. That's going to change how you think, how you feel, what you believe. But when they start to see some of the things that I say, when they start to see other people say, when they start to hear the Don Lemons and the and the Jackie Reeds, and I was listening to um, Ricky Smiley this morning, and he talked about this um, state representative in South Carolina, and it was the same story that I talked about last week with this 19-year-old girl who was pregnant, and this, this Republican state representative started to have a change of heart because this girl had some issues with her pregnancy. In any other time before Roe v. Wade was overturned, she would have had a medical abortion because the baby was basically dead inside of her. But now, since they can't do an abortion in the state of South Carolina, the doctor says there's nothing we can do for you and sent her home. So when I hear other people start to talk about the stories that I've already covered, it tells me that my message is not only relevant, but it's timely because I said it first. And I do a lot of research for this. So without going off on the tangent, say it again, good evening, welcome to the show. Um, huh, Mar-a-Lago, mm, mm. Mm -mm. The good and the bad is I wish they would have done this sooner because the good and the bad is this. It's good to send a message that you're not above the law. I understand that the reason that they waited to do some of this is because they wanted his popularity to wane. But a lot of those people that follow him, follow him because he spewed the hate that's deep-seated inside of them. And that doesn't change simply because he's out of office. So, mar lago the good is they sent the message. The bad is it made, when his popularity was really starting to wane, it gave the knucklehead a shot in the arm and, and increases not his popularity, but it gave him a, another national platform. And it gave him an opportunity to, to whine that somehow he's, been, he's the victim again. It's amazing that the people that always do the most dirt are always the ones who cry foul the most. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about it. But I'm proud to be here in Florida. Um, last Tuesday was our election. Over the weekend, I took a couple people to the polls and I tried to do my part, you know what I'm saying? And this last Tuesday, what we found out is Val Demings, and you guys, a lot of you remember, Val Demings is the US representative from the state of Florida. She used to be chief of police and blah, blah, blah but she really made a name for herself. She had a positive showing during the impeachment trials of despicable delusion Modani. She represented herself. She represented the state of Florida very well. So it looks like she's going to be running against Marco Rubio. Um, up until this point, she's out earned him for his, his, his donations are concerned. Now the pundits, the talking heads, the media is starting to talk about this dark money, that this Republican dark money, and they talk specifically about Rick Scott, who used to be a governor here, um, and the representative and blah, 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 blah. But he's out on his boat in the Mediterranean off the coast of Italy, and they're talking about how he's going to start funding money into Marco Rubio's campaign to try to stop Val Demings from winning. So I feel good about that. Um, 
in New York, there was something that happened, you know, with the, we always talk about these piss poor and mediocre performances. And I, always, I, I talk about being an administrator if I had to evaluate these people. So we talked about all that was going on in the state of New York with, with Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo, and, and then all of this other stuff and these people and this people and, and what's happening there and this person being investigated and so forth and so on. Well, Pat Ryan, looks like he's going to be the man. He's a Democrat in New York, so that's a good thing. There are things, and all of this is just showing us that all is not laws. So those folks that feel like you're not in the politics because you feel powerless, all I'm saying is this. A <laughs> hundred, hundred fifty days ago, Things look pretty bleak. In spite of piss poor Pelosi leadership, there's still hope that the Dems, the D I M, capital D, capital I, capital M, small letter S, can hold the house. Imagine that. We've got 75 days left, and somebody's been listening to my rants. Somebody's been listening to my sermon. Somebody's been listening to the message that I've been spewing about the what ifs of a McCarthy and McConnell Republican, Trump Republican rule in Congress. So as a result of all of this, like I tell you, I'm psyched. Tonight's show is called Three Quarters Left, Game On. My name is Hank Batiste. This is Omit the Logic. This shit makes no sense. We got to make it make sense. Let's do this. Mar-a-Lago, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, every day we hear about redactions and, and what was on the warrant and so forth and so on. The thing that I would impress upon you, the thing that's most important is I call him despicable for a reason, because what he showed us on January the 6th is if he can't have it, he would burn it down. It being this country, it being power. When he left the White House, he took a lot of top secret, sensitive information that had to do with military plans. They talk about he took what they call in love letters between him and Putin and Kim Jong-un. Korea and, and Russia are the two places, plus China, that would love to see America fall. If he cannot get nominated in 2024, who's to say with his love of Putin that he won't give some of this information. Now they're saying some of the documents that they seize shows that Bill Barr, his attorney general that looks like Dan Connors, or John Goodman, shielded him from the Mueller report that showed that he obstructed the investigation into his Russia influence, a Russia's influence in the 2020 elections, in the 2016 elections. So all of this is, it's not only pertinent, it's beyond important because anybody that feels like if I can't have it in this childish, if I can't win, I'm gonna take my, my ball and leave the park. Anybody knows if you're playing, if you're playing ball, and um, you play elimination, if they're using your ball and your team loses, 
then you have to take next, and you have to wait for a chance to come up and play again. You don't just childishly take your part, your your ball, and leave the park. And the game is over, and everybody knows somebody who's like that. So he would easily give away this information to see this country fall. So it was imperative that they did what they did. But I don't like the timing of how and when they did it. So no said about that. Um, one more thing. I don't know about this. Again, I, I started doing some research and I was trying to find exact dates and what have you. And I'm going to just mention it in past, passing because some media outlets are saying that Mar-a-Lago has been invaded by cyber criminals. They didn't say terrorists, but cyber criminals. According to some media outlets, when the FBI went in, they found top secret documents lying around unsecured and what have you. So enough about that. We all know he has the name Despicable for a reason. I keep talking about piss poor Pelosi leadership. Last week I talked about Nancy Pelosi and the fact that she and her son, Paul Pelosi Jr., went to Taiwan. Last week, I talked about her son getting 7,000 shares from a telecom company. I'm going to reiterate this. One of my doctors is Taiwanese or from Taiwan, and he was talking about the fact that it adds to this uneasy relationship between Taiwan and China. She has made more money for herself and her family as speak of the house. What I'd like to see at some point is what her network was before she became speaker of the house and how it's grown in the last year and a half since she's been speaker. And all of that is important because I've been saying all along that Joe Biden needs to lead by executive order. If Congress doesn't follow you, you need to, the bad thing about an executive order is while you are in the White House, it's a temporary law. And the next president can basically just overrule all of those things. An executive law or executive order cannot be vetoed by Congress, but it, gave, it gives the president executive privilege of power, and we saw Trump abuse it. This week, what we saw, and I said somebody's been <laughs> somebody's been talking to. Joe, because he's starting to do exactly what I said he should do. But this week he talked about $10,000 relief for student loans. I don't know about you guys. I got two masters. I had over $80,000 in student loans. So $10,000 would have did nothing to alleviate that. But he did it, and this is this is me analyzing. I didn't have a, a, a talk with Joe Biden, but if I were president, if I were the CEO of a corporation called America, and I had to deal with a board of directors called Congress, with all of that backbiting, and not being able to even depend on those people that are in the same party I am in. And I was frustrated with trying to get things done. And I decided I'm going to show the American people that I'm trying to keep the promises that I made on a campaign trail. 
And I wrote this executive order. And of all the people, Nancy Pelosi has the audacity to say that it's not legal. He does not have the power to do it. And I'm saying, how do you have the mitigated goal to abuse your power as Speaker of the House to make money hand over fist? And Biden is trying to do something for those that look like me. Because it's, even though there are a lot of white folks, a lot of us that are on the come up the first time around, even when we get scholarships, we still need money for housing, we need money for food, we need money for transportation, and we need money to have a life outside of the classroom. And that's where student loans come in. And then you get to a point where you can't get a Pell Grant anymore. So now it's all about the student loan. But she's made all of this money and because she can't get something out of it, she says that she had their mitigated goal to say that what Biden did was not legal. How dare you? So, again, this is the prediction I made. Enough of that. I can understand what he's saying. I was the first one to say, run, Joe, run. I was the first one to say the, the challenges that he would have within his own party. I was the first one to say that Pelosi was not the right candidate or person to be Speaker of the House. And I said it had nothing to do with her being a woman, but every woman, okay, I won't say every, but about 80% of the women that follow me took issue with me being that blunt and that outspoken. And I don't give a care if you're Democrat, if you're Republican, if you're independent. If what you're doing, I don't agree with, I'm going to speak on it. So I said it back then, and now everybody's starting to see why I said what I said, when I said what I said. Moving on. Um, a couple things happened this week as well. The state of Kansas, shout out to the people of Kansas. They overturned the abortion referendum. Now that it's left up to the state, the state of Kansas says, no, we want to make sure that a woman still has the right to choose. So they won't be like that little 19 year old girl in South Carolina. So. To those of you, I'm going to say it one more again, who are fed up, who feels like I'm not in the politics because it doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference in their strength in numbers. And Kansas is not the only place. So wherever you are, it starts with one. So if each one teach one, if each one reach one, we can fight this nonsense. Three quarters, game on. I call it three quarters because we got 75 days left. 75. Yeah, I'm psyched. That first 25 days was that 100 days ago when things looked so bleak. And now we're turning things around. Last week I wore my, huh, where's that? Oh. I brought it back for y'all. I wore my golden shirt jersey, my golden state jersey, because I'm a competitor and I believe in leadership. And right now, all is not lost. 75, three quarters left. And we could turn this around. The biggest challenge moving forward is not maintaining a majority in the House of Representatives. The biggest challenge, once we take more seats in the House of Representatives, is convincing those powerful people that Nancy has made money for 
that it's time for Pelosi to pass the gavel. So remember, you heard it here first. On November the 9th, on November the 10th, my birthday, and the following week, when we start talking about who should be Speaker of the House, the one name that should not be there is Pelosi. That's all I got to say about that. Um, there's so much happening now. And I'm going to just say this, folks. We got 75 days. I said we got three quarters left. So look at it in every 25 days for the next 75 days, moving up to November 8th. What can we do? to stay focused and increase the majority. And, and then, let me, I wasn't gonna go off on this tangent, but let me just say this, because I don't swallow anybody's doctrine, hook, line, and sinker. I don't drink anybody's Kool-Aid. I'm gonna make my own iced tea. I'm not a true Democrat. Nor am I a, a Republican or independent. I understand that this two-party system, like it or not, is what we have to deal with. And I'm tired, just like you are, I'm tired of dealing with the less of two evils. So what I'm trying to get you guys to understand is every 25 days, 25, 50, 75, November the 8th. It's about accountability. A, it's about doing the background work and find out who it is that you're voting for, finding out what their platform is, what their history is. And not only that, the hard part. When people get into office, they assume the power. And a lot of times, once they assume the power, they assume the position. And they become just like the others because they see this corruption is so wanton. And they feel like they can't fight it. So it's up to us to provide the oversight, the accountability and hold them accountable, whether their name is Trump, Pelosi, Manchin, Biden, it does not matter. 75 days, three quarters, game on. Every 25 days, let's come up with a strategy on how to make our individual communities better. And how are we going to hold them accountable? After this is over, after November 8th, I think I'm going to expand. But I'm going to talk about how to put things in order. How to make some of these changes. So stay tuned. That's all I got for you tonight. Three quarters, game on. There's light at the end of the tunnel. We were down by 25, but now we up by eight. What we do in the next three quarters is on us. I'll see you next week, right here, same Baptiste time, same Baptiste place. Do me a favor before you go, go to my YouTube, sign up. Hit the bell, subscribe, and share it with somebody else. Look for a couple of my TikToks. I'm going to do a couple of TikToks. Some of these I'll uh, break down into a minute, minute and a half message that's easy to digest because I give you a lot of information in 30, 35 minutes. But subscribe. 
hit the bell so you know when I come up with more information. Now that YouTube is having these little shorts, I may start utilizing both platforms, TikTok and YouTube, to get the word out. And after that, it's on you. So what you gonna do? I'll see you next week, right here. Say bad teach time, say bad teach place. It's always important. I wish you love. I wish you peace, my people. I like you, man. Even though I got a <laughs> I got a LeBron haircut. I wish you had grease. So good night. Much love.